Right before we jump into this video, if you want to get my free 11 Days to Better Photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to sign up right now. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com here with another three shots or less where my goal is to go into different situations and scenarios to try to get the perfect exposure in only three shots. So here we are on the roof of the Fro factory because it just snowed. And it so happens that the sun is coming out now that the storm has already moved away. But a lot of people requested to see how we can get the perfect exposure in three shots or less shooting in the snow. Now what happens when you shoot in the snow? You're shooting something that's really bright and reflective which may throw off your camera. So in this situation and scenario, I want to get the proper exposure for the bobblehead right here who so happens to be missing an arm. He kind of lost it during a Star Wars accident but that's okay. He's got a new one on order from Amazon right now. So. How am I going to build this exposure? I'm going to get the camera set to where it tells me it thinks the proper exposure is going to be. What you need to understand is I have that set to 3D matrix metering in the Nikon and on the Canon side that's evaluative metering and same thing for a bunch of the other cameras out there. So what it's actually doing is taking the brightest part of the scene, the darkest part of the scene and giving you the average right in the middle which is what they call 18% gray. So what I'm shooting with is the Nikon D5600 with the 70 to 200 2.8 Nikon, but don't worry if you don't have a 2.8, I'm going to set it to f5, which will match just about any lens out there that you guys are using. So let me look through the camera and see what the settings are and take our first photo. So I'm going to take a look. All right, so what the camera is telling me at 100 ISO at 2,000th of a second at f5, it's saying that's the proper exposure. So let's take a shot and see how it looks. Take a look and right there you can see that it's underexposed because what's happening is that the meter is getting all of that extra light that's reflecting off the snow and thinking that you need to have a faster shutter speed than you really should. Now if anybody's out there that says I should have been shooting in spot metering, that's one option that you could use. But in this case, I want it to be set to full auto so that the camera can tell us what it thinks it should be and now we have two shots to get it right. Now keep in mind, I'm not here to get the perfect composition. This is just a test and a sample. So next, because it's darker, I'm going to go down to 1 to 50th of a second to see what that looks like and let's take that right now. So I'm going to dial this down to 1 to 50th of a second. Still at F5, still at ISO 100, and let's take a look. Boom. Now we take a look, and you can see that it's overexposed. It's much too bright. The point of this three shots or less is just to show you the cause and effect. If we do this, this is what happens. If we do that, that's what's going to happen. So now I think that the better exposure is going to be somewhere around 1 500th, 1 640th of a second. So I'm going to dial that into 1 640th of a second for my third shot and see how that looks. So here we go, 1 640th of a second. And let's shoot that right here. Boom. Take a look and it's much, much closer. Now keep in mind I'm shooting raw. When I bring this into the computer, it's gonna, it should look pretty good and it should be pretty close. Now that's how you build the exposure for a situation like this. A lot of times you may find yourself in the snow trying to shoot your dog or shooting your kids or something along those lines and you need to understand that right off the bat, your meter's going to be wrong because there's so much light reflecting off the snow because it's bright white and your camera sees that as 18% gray, so your image is gonna come out underexposed. So you now know what you need to do. You need to let more light in than what the camera is telling you to do. So that's it, that's another three shots or less. If you have different situations and scenarios you'd like to see me shoot in, well go ahead and leave that down in the comments and that's where we'll leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.